As RVers, we have a lot of gear, but the problem is you don't want to get gear that is going to be overrated or isn't a good fit for you. You want to find the gear that works best for you. And the problem is things like GPS, backup cameras, or surge protectors can get really expensive, so you don't really want to make a mistake. So today, I'm going to give you a handful of things that, in my opinion, I think are overrated and some things that I think are kind of underrated. So let's get started in the list. We're kicking things off with this side camera on the RV. I think side cameras on RVs are a bit overrated for what you're getting there. Our backup camera just went down, so when we're going down the road, we can't see anything directly behind us. And is all that we've been left with are the side cameras on the RV. But honestly, my big blind spot is back here, right behind the RV. On the sides of the RV, when you're going down the road, it's kind of an overlap with the mirrors. My mirrors, I never feel like I really have a blind spot on the sides of the RV when we're towing. The only time that the side cameras would come in handy is when you're maneuvering tightly, trying to back up into something, and maybe you don't have a spotter that kind of gives you a sight on that blind side, which which could be nice. But the, the back of the RV is where the big blind spot is. I, I know I have my camera down low, which I really do kind of like this view, and I wish that I could have a system that I could just swipe between a, a, a lower camera and an upper camera, one that's aimed more down and one that's aimed more behind you. That would, that would actually be pretty handy. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for a new backup camera system. I do want it to be a little bit more sleek. I, I actually have a lot of ideas of what I would like to be put into a, a backup camera system. So if I find that, I'm gonna be installing that on the RV. If I don't, I'm halfway considering trying to put something together that would be like the ultimate backup camera system for RV. Now this next one is probably not going to be a popular opinion, but please hear me out before the keyboard warriors get going to uh, blast me through it. Because one thing that I think is overrated for RVing are the X chocks. Not necessarily the name brand, but the, the chalk that you put in between the two wheels and you tighten it down. They do have their place, but it's something that I do think is overrated. It's just about everywhere that you look talking about X chocks and how great they are. I'll give you an alternative that I think is much underrated, but the X chocks, when you read the instructions, they tell you to chalk your tires, then level and set up your RV, and then you can put the X chocks in there. So I'm already going to be using chocks, but then I'm also going to be using X chocks. So then the X chalk is just there for the, the stability purpose. Now I did do a video comparing different stabilizers and I included the X chocks and a, a cross member type system like this, and also a, a homemade system. And X chocks came in last. Now the one criticism that I had on that video is I, I didn't show the results of testing it from front to back and that's where the X chocks would do the best. I did do the test, but I had no results because it was properly chalked and it, it wasn't moving against the, the chalks anyways. So I would say that a system like this for stabilizing your RV is somewhat underrated. And so there are different options that are out there. Moride has a system, there's JT Strong Arm, which I really like. BAL even has a, a lock arm system. These are definitely going to outperform uh, an x chalk type system for stabilizing the RV. Now, the one place that I think the x chocks really kind of shine is if you're having to go up on blocks and you're needing a chalk where you can't chalk it when you're up on blocks, that does come in in a handy way where you can lock it in and keep the RV from moving around when you're up on blocks. We use the wedge system, which kind of has its own chalk and nestles the tire in there and holds it pretty tight. Uh, but I'm gonna put a link down in the description to everything that we're talking about today. So if you're looking for a cross member system like the JT Strong Arm, uh, that's gonna be down in the description. Because one of the nice thing about the cross member system like this is you don't have to store it anywhere. It's not something that you really have to tear down or set up. Yes, you have to loosen it and tighten it when you're setting up and tearing down. But like the JT Strong Arm, you don't even need tools for that. So it's just a quick tighten, quick loosen, and you don't have to store anything in a compartment or in the bed of the truck or anything like that. It's just all kind of nestled in there, already installed on the RV. I'm a big fan of this type of stabilization for RVs. Quick little side note bonus tip for wheel chocks. If you're putting these in, you're putting it on payment, it really doesn't matter how you're gonna slide it in there. But if you're on gravel, if you put it on the ground and slide it towards the wheel, oftentimes that gravel wants to rest in the opposite direction of where you slid it from. So if you're putting this, installing it on a wheel, I usually put it on the wheel surface up higher and then I'll slide it down the tread until it contacts the ground. You're gonna try and move less rocks and roll them and you usually get a little bit tighter, firmer fit with wheel chocks. Just a handy little tip. 
Okay, let's do one that I think a lot of us can agree on, and it's RV toilet paper. RV specific toilet paper, I think is one of those things that's overrated. It's like double the price of normal toilet paper. The key there, if you're getting just any toilet paper, just uh, make sure it's septic safe, that it's going to break down easily is the key. You want these things to be able to break down so that if there is a section of toilet paper inside of your black tank, it does break down and it's not going to cause a clog. So. Having toilet paper that's gonna break down is, I guess you could say underrated. I don't think it's really underrated, but I do think RV specific toilet paper is one of those things that's overrated. Okay, now next, that brings us to three things that I keep in here at arm's reach every time we RV. Yes, every time we RV. Number one is a paper map. Yes, an actual paper map. Last time I had mentioned it, somebody commented, bro, you're still using a paper map. Do you know what year it is? And absolutely, I am still using a paper map. This is the Rand McNally Atlas, and it gives you uh, trucker routes for everything across the U.S. So it gives you each state broken down. And what an asset that is. So it's not dependent on any kind of electronic or any kind of signal or anything like that. And you can always pull this up and open it. And it's a good skill to have, be able to read a map and know where you're going. I'm not saying an RV GPS is overrated. I am saying that we can be over dependent on things like that. So sometimes when we need to change our route, depending on what's ahead of us, this allows us to do that rather than trying to force some kind of software into taking a route that maybe it wasn't going to take you on originally. So paper map. Number two is a tire pressure monitor system. Now I'm actually gonna play both sides of this because I think this can be underrated. So I've seen people say, I would rather check the tires when I stop to get gas or I go to the bathroom or before I hit the road in the morning, that this is doing more than that. This is checking it while you're on the road, while you're driving, trying to catch those problems before it happens. So this really can be underrated. Don't underestimate the value of having a device that's going to look for problems and keep you safe in, in situations that you may not even be aware of. And then on the the flip side of it. I'm going to say that it's underrated to be checking your tires all the time. You should be checking them before you hit the, the road in the morning. When you're stopping for fuel, walk around, visually look at those tires and check them out. Don't get lazy by relying just on the tire pressure monitor system. It, it can kind of be underrated on both sides of the spectrum there. So that, that's why this makes the list. Number three is our dash camera. I think it's one of the things that is just kind of runs in the background, kind of underrated, undervalued, but is doing the job all the time. So we had our USB kind of system inside of the truck fail. And so the dash camera wasn't working. And then when I realized that it wasn't working, it wasn't charging, I went to go pull something up from an incident that had happened and we weren't able to pull it up. So having a working dash camera inside of your vehicle for RVing, I think can be a very, very valuable valuable thing, not something to be underestimated. Majority of the time you're going to be fine without it, but those times that you wish you had it, it's really going to come in handy. Now this next one we actually talk a lot about and it's surge protectors. I think they're a little bit overrated. You might think that sounds kind of ridiculous. I, I think they're overrated because when you get a surge protector, you think that you're, you're kind of ultimately protected and they are good to, to protect you against surges and checking the, the wiring and the pedestal and making sure that what you're connecting up to is, is properly wired and safe to do so. But I think the, the part that we miss is the additional features that we could have with other surge protectors. Like this one is an EPO. So this one's actively going to be searching for problems. And we have had that happen on a couple of occasions where uh, power, there was a change in the power system upstream, low voltage event happened and this disconnected us for it. So. This is actually just a surge protector that we have out here. I know we're kind of weird, we, we double protect. We have a surge protector out here so it's easy to be able to carry and see if the pedestal is wired properly. And then we have a hardwired one on the RV that it is like this EPO one that if it has low voltage or something changes inside the electrical system coming into your RV, it will shut it down and block you from any problem. So I think these kind are a little bit underrated. Yes, they are much more expensive, but I. I think that the surge protector is somewhat overrated because we think it might be doing a little bit more than it than it actually is. I guess more of the problem is that we, we talk about them as surge protectors, but they can do so much more than that. You can kind of see a theme that I like having equipment that works for me in the background that I don't have to, to babysit that's gonna look for those problems before I might find them. The next one is right over here. Now, this one was my wife's idea. I asked her, is there anything that's overrated or underrated on the RV? And she didn't hesitate. She said, 
Underrated is our tankless water heater. And now, a lot of people, they've taken a lot of flack. You can find forums and people that really complain about tankless water heaters. So I'm gonna put an asterisk on there. I'm gonna say it's the Truma tankless water heater. In short, it just solves all the problems that a lot of the other tankless water heaters have, mainly because it's, it's kind of a tankless water heater. It has a little vessel inside of there, a mixing vessel. So you get rid of those hot and cold patches, or if you turn it off, you don't get a blast of cold when you turn it back on. It solves all those. And so a lot of people will also complain that you're gonna waste water when you're going out boondocking, but it has a secret little advantage where you literally just turn the dial, and then you no longer have to wait for hot water. It's not like you have to waste that cold water for it to, to heat up because it has that mixing vessel that it can heat up even before you start using water. So for us, if we go boondocking, we just put it on that setting 20 seconds before we hop in the shower and we instantly have hot water. No, no wasting water. I would say the only drawback to the Truma is you, you can't install it yourself and it is at the top of the price range. But I still believe that it is at the top of the list. It's the, the mark to beat for somebody to come out with a tankless water heater. That, that is the mark to beat. But if you're looking for some other budget accessories or maybe essential accessories, uh, you can check out some of our other videos that we've done in the past. Lots of great information and resources in those. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So as always, if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we'll see you next video. Take care.